Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and in this short introduction video now I'm going to walk you through what we are planning in this beautiful 2018 Audi RS6. As you can see a fair amount of gear goes into it, a couple of things are actually missing from this display but I'll walk you through it. Most of the German cars are great in the way that they have the possibility for most integration. So in this one we can use this NFTV Zen 5 which is going to uh, integrate into the fiber optic line and then we will get clean optical output straight to our DSP. So the DSP Ultra is going to look after the signal processing to run everything fully active. Uh, the front doors, rear doors, everywhere. But we also have an additional module. The HD Bluetooth module should we want to stream uh, bypassing the factory source but in this car in these cars are certainly you know it's certainly great to have most integration because on the, all the phone calls everything everything is is fully functional volume control track control from all the control bits in the car so yes if you can I would certainly advise to have the most integration so up front we are planning freeway active with those ML6 mid-base drivers, hopefully we can fit them, well, we have to fit them, because the car comes with factory enclosures from Bose. Then the mid-range is going to go onto the pillar, including the tweeter. These ML3s, we tested them recently and we were well surprised, I didn't expect them to be so nice and dynamic and sensitive, considering their size, because they are tiny. Well, standard 3 inch, but the design of being really shallow, tiny neodymium magnet, which makes it nice and easy to install. Um, it certainly makes it look slightly smaller, although we are going to have the factory aluminium, sorry, stainless. They are stainless uh, rings for them to hold the grills because the tweeters come with these nice grills which pop in by the magnetic field of, of the driver, pulls them in. It's relatively easy to pop them off, not by hand, but you need something then you can pop them out. But we are going to use the ML1s for tweeter duties. These tweeters and the previous version of it have been around for ages. They are really nice and smooth and detailed. They are beautiful tweeters for sure. So that's going to be the freeway front end. But we are also going to have another ML3 as a center field because the car has center field location. Um, not that a proper freeway front end would need a center field but you can have advantages especially when you have spare channels or if you have uh, two seat tune so we are going to have one for the center too for the rear we are going to have another set of ml6 uh, and this is the dust cap version i didn't mention i didn't show it to you because they have the face plug version as well oh yeah by the way don't st store the driver like this on its rubber i just put it down just to take pictures and Photographs, it's not gonna hurt it, but for long term, never store a speaker like this. But they have the face plug version as well, which is slightly better in the upper mid range if you want to run two way. However, these tweeters can run really, really low, surprisingly low. So even this ML6 uh, dust cap version is, is more than capable enough to play up to the mid range. But at the rear, we are going to pair them with the GR1 tweeters, which are slightly smaller. Those are 28mm diaphragm, these are 25mm, if I know well. And they have this ceramic coat or something on the GR line. So we are going to have those. In an ideal world, I would have had the GR uh, mid-base as well, but currently we couldn't get them in time. So we are going to go with the same mid-base for the rear, especially as the owner likes a lot of mid-base. So we will certainly have a preset, which is not going to be like a proper competition level preset. It's going to be more like a daily fun preset where we can also utilize the rear mid-base for additional kick in the car. We will have the director to control the system. Um, usually we install the conductor, which is a way simpler and easier piece of controller, uh, which we, we like a lot. But the owner really wanted to see the director, which is a very complex controller and I would like to emphasize to many people who dream about a director and they never had it make sure that you sit down one evening and you read every single page about the user manual because if you just drop it in and if you think you will find everything automatically 
you will be surprised. There are so many features these days in the director where you have menus on the sub menus and, and it's just oh, several pages of features. You can do a lot with it, but it's rather for those who have had it before or who have advanced understanding of um, technical things like this because those users who have never had anything complex, the conductor is the best controller, but that's just my opinion. So we will have to install that, which is going to be a bit trickier. For amplification, yes, three C4s. So one is going to run front, tweeter and mid. The other one is going to run uh, mid bass up front and probably uh, center fill, one spare channel. And then the last one is going to run the rear fill uh, fully active. So that's how we will maximize the channels from the Ultra because we will have six for the front end then two more for the rear field, that's eight. Then we have center, that's nine, right? And then we have a sub that we could run mono, which would be only 10 channels. Technically we could have a DSP Pro, but yeah, we have spare channels. We can feed um, a pair of RCAs for the sub mono block, which is not here right now. That's going to be a stag uh, K-series 2500, a two and a half kilowatt monoblock, because these JR subs, many people know, these are the 12 W7. We used the 13 not long time ago in the Mercedes E-Class. The owner likes bass. One of these would be enough for a front end like that, but those who want to have proper big bass and they want to feel it, yeah, two of them definitely give more output 100%, uh, but these are single voice call free ohm and because of that it's just a bit difficult to find an amplifier that can feed these beefy subs because that they can take a kilowatt um, easily so we are going to wire them to one and a half ohm and from that monoblock we should be seeing uh, yeah somewhere around two kilowatt for them which is ideal there are not many monoblocks these days sadly helix has the m1x but on three ohm it's not quite sufficient to have plenty of headroom for these if these were different core configuration, like Duo 2, that would be ideal, really ideal. As you can see, JL even sends like a plastic little cup for covering the magnet, and then there's an extra layer, so you want to make sure that that doesn't get scratched, because it's going to be probably on display in the car, you will see. So that's the plan for the car, and we certainly have plenty of space in the boot or trunk depending on where you live and where you're watching these videos from um, the good thing is that we have easy access to the factory amplifier and most integration in some of the factory lines it's right there so that's pretty handy to do and we are also going to add an extra lithium battery to the system because one single factory battery i don't think would deal with uh, this load, especially with the base, with that big monoblock, because these cars these days come with smart charging and yeah, they don't always charge and then you would deplete the battery. Although that's a pretty big factory battery, that's a 105 amp hour, but still. That lithium doesn't have a cutoff, uh, like most of the leisure lithiums that we also figured out from previous project where a 100 amp hour lithium could only be okay up to like 115 amp. Yeah, you could, you, yeah, you can run out of that pretty easily if you have a big, big sub. Um, whereas this one, the 75 amp hour lithium uh, is good up to 280 amp. That's where the cutoff is. And then two batteries together will deal with this load 100%. That's the factory sub box. Look at that. Nice. Probably this has a six or an eight, eight inch driver you know, ported enclosure. To be fair, from a factory system, they are not bad but you can certainly do better. I tuned one of these RS6s years ago when you could see when we had the nightmare video when the shop installed mid-bass in that car really badly and we had to fix that and the owner was using this mid-bass um, and after having clean power for it and retuning it wasn't bad at all. From factory it's not really special but once it was amplified we could get really good results out of it even from this factory box but that's gonna go and we will see what pieces of equipment we might be able to hide down there to get more room in the car. Although we have pretty much free hands on what we want to do. The owner said that he wanted uh, a nice show looking build. 
that may actually go to shows in the future. And as you can see, it's going to be pretty much like an AudioTech Fisher um, Brex Helix demo car, except the subs and the monoblock. But the rest is going to be full AudioTech Fisher. So we will have a nice, simple layout with three Helix amplifiers. Monoblock is going to go somewhere. We will figure it out. Subs in the middle in a nice big enclosure. I would like to have a, uh, a plexi at least to show the the magnets something nice and simple but effective tasty lighting something similar to to what we built last year in the audi sq7 that we haven't shared on youtube which i have content of but never managed to find time for that so this should be a pretty nice build you will see coming along we will update of it on patreon if you haven't heard about patreon before then please check out the description and the link in it where we have a lot of daily updates you can see step-by-step -step progress of big projects like this you can learn a lot from we have rt evaluations weekly topics all sorts of things so it's worth to check it out now there's more than two and a half years worth of content that you can have access to and you can learn a lot so i'm gonna leave it here i just wanted a quick and nice introduction and i'll see you in the next one take care